Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, Despia has finally arrived to Master Duel. The best pairing for Dark Lords has finally shown up, and it performs pretty well. Let's talk about the deck and what it does. First of all, the Despia cards, as well as the Fallen of All Balas cards, are all cards that synergize around Fusion Summoning, which is very nice, because with them being fusion summon focused as well as dark fairy type monsters it allows us to utilize their advantage to go into big powerful boss monsters like the first dark lord using fusion spells such as super poly uh the despia theater field spell as well as something that we don't have which is branded in red but all in all it's still a very competent strategy with a lot of recursion and consistency that adds to the playstyle of Dark Lords. So let's quickly talk about the card by card. So first and foremost, let's talk about the hand traps. We are playing Triple Maxi, Double Gamma, and Driver, and then one Nibiru. The reason we're playing Gamma is because of the fact that it is a light target. You could also play, if you don't want to play Gamma, you could play uh, Effect Veiler. Both of them are light, which allows us to go into some of our fusion monsters. So it's very nice to have specifically light targets. Sure, you could play other such light targets, but playing hand traps is very nice. Uh, Nibiru, same thing. We're playing the one Nibiru because it's, you know, you can get it off of max C, but more importantly, it's a light. Moving on to the Despia cards. We are playing Triple Despia Tragedy. This card's crazy. If it is sent to the graveyard or banished by card effect, you can add a Despia monster from your deck to your hand. This is very good, seeing as how uh, if you fusion summon, it's sent to the graveyard or banished, uh, and it allows you to get a search. On top of that, uh, it does have a graveyard effect, where you could target one of your banished or one of your branded speller traps in the graveyard, and then set it onto the field by banishing this one. It's okay. Uh, most of the time, that one doesn't come up. Moving on, we are playing two Fallen of All Bars. This card is crazy. It's just super polymerization in a monster. Uh, however, it is not, you know, at quick effect speed or something like that. Uh, but it is very crazy. You discard a card when it is normal or special summoned to fusion summon a fusion monster from your extra deck uh, using this card as well as uh, cards from either side of the field. Mostly, what you'll go into is uh, Albion or Titanoclad. Basically, these are the two most prominent targets, and that's why we're playing both. Uh, Titanoclad requires a monster with 2,500 or more attack, and then uh, Albion just requires a light monster. So... Either of those is very solid targets. We are missing a few of the other targets for Despia and Fallen Volbaz. Um, that would make this deck a little bit better. But moving on, we are also playing two Alubur, the Jester of Despia. The reason we're playing two is because we have a lot of ways to search it um, and to special summon it. So having it is uh, not uncommon, right? We don't. We have a lot of ways to see it. So if it is normal or special summon, you add a branded Speller Trap from your deck to your hand. And if a fusion monster is destroyed or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, or sorry, destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, while this card is in your graveyard, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls, special summon this card, negate the effects of the target. Now, the thing is, because most of the time, if it is if a monster is destroyed by battle, uh, you're special summoning this, most things can't negate this because it is during the damage step. This card's absolutely crazy um, and just very, very solid. Uh, we are playing the two targets in Despia Theater and Branded Opening for this card. Uh, Despia Theater allows you to fusion summon a level 8 or higher fusion monster from your extra deck using materials from the hand or field as material. Also, if a, a non-fusion fairy monster leaves the field due to an opponent's card, you are able to return one of your level 8 or higher fusion monsters from the graveyard. Absolutely crazy. Uh, adds a lot of recursion to the deck. We're only playing two because it's kind of a brick unless you have uh, other cards and it's searchable off of this guy, which is very searchable. Um, we're also playing Branded Opening. This card, you discard a card, then you either add a Despia monster from your deck to your hand or special summon it in defense position. And then you are locked into fusion monsters for the rest of the turn. Also, if you're a fusion monster you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card from the graveyard instead. Added protection, 
makes it very, very solid. We're also playing one Dramaturge of Despia. This card's also searchable, but it is a level eight. And if you're, if a Fusion Synchro Exe or Link monster is special summoned, you can target an effect monster on the field, negate its effects. And this happens really quickly. Uh, it is the first thing to happen as soon as something is summoned. So it's very similar to something like a, uh, uh, a Solemn Judgment. It basically happens very first. Uh, so if anything else were, happen would to, were to happen in a chain, um, this would happen first. This would be chain link one. So do keep that in mind. If anything happens on summon it for it to start a chain, uh, this is chain link one. Also, if it is used as fusion material and set to the graveyard or banished, you can special summon it. Absolutely crazy card. Just really, really solid. I've talked about Dark Lords a lot, so let's just do the card by card for the Dark Lords. Ukubak, double indulged, double superbia, triple Ixshell, just draw cards. I am playing Morningstar, not a lot of people are. This card's crazy because I just like him. Uh, but it also allows you to get the first effect of your first Dark Lord. On top of that, we are playing triple banishment and only double contact. Contact can kind of be a brick sometimes uh, if you don't specifically see like superbia and Ixshell. Uh, we are also playing Triple Allure of Darkness because you can literally banish your tragedy to get the search of tragedy while also drawing two. So it's just like a plus two in card advantage. Absolutely crazy card. Uh, moving on, we are playing two Super Polymerization. This card's absolutely crazy. There's a reason it's limited to two. Um, and realistically, I kind of wish it was at three. We're playing Double Called by the Grave and Double Droplets as well. Moving on to the extra deck. I know this deck is pretty expensive, but uh, it gets worse from here. <laughs> We're playing one Mud Dragon of the Swamp and one Starving Venom Fusion Dragon for our Super Poly targets. We are playing one Titanic Lad and one Albion for our Fallen of All Boss targets. We are playing one Despia uh, Qu Quar. We're just going to call it Quar. <laughs> and one Despia Prosken uh, Proskenion. Uh, these cards are crazy. This one, at quick effect, changes all the attack and defense or sorry, the attack of all monsters on the field that are not level 8 or higher fusion monsters to 0. Also, if it leaves the field due to an opponent's card effect, you can add or special summon a Fallen of All Buzz or Despia monster from your deck, allowing you to even go into something like Dramaturge. So if somehow, uh, during your opponent's combo, they get rid of this guy, uh, you're able to special summon out this one and then negate an effect of another monster that is special summoned. Very, very good. So, yeah, floating effect as well as, you know, the effects to basically just say no. No other monsters can have attack. Very cool. Uh, it does require a Despia monster and then a light or dark. Uh, Proskenion requires a light, dark, and Despia monster. And during the main phase, you could target one one Fusion, Synchro, or Xe, uh, Xe or Link monster that is in your opponent's graveyard, banish it, or special it to your field. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that uh, to that monster's original attack and defense. Pretty simple. He's just a big beater and, you know, a good super poly target as well. You know, you normal summon one of these guys, you super poly off your opponent's field. Very, very nice. Moving on, we are also playing two of the first Dark Lords. This card's very, very good and the boss monster of the deck. You can't be targeted. It requires three Dark Fairies, which, hey, all of the Despia cards are, in fact, Dark Fairies. So it allows you to go into this guy even easier. On top of that, during the main phase, you can special summon a fairy monster from your hand to a graveyard, meaning even if you don't have a Dark Lord, you can still special summon out your uh, Despia cards. Absolutely insane card. Protection and, and everything. Uh, on top of that, it's protected by Branded, which makes it even stronger. So yeah, very, very solid. Moving on to the two cards that you probably can cut, Hope Harbinger and Zeus. Just, they're Xyz, they're okay, they're not necessary though. We are playing one Condemned Dark Lord. This card does come up quite a bit. Uh, it can be summoned off of two fairies. So any two fairies, you're able to summon it off uh, off of that. Notably, Fallen of All Bows is a dragon, so do keep that in mind. But yeah, just Condemned. Uh, one IP Mascarena, very solid as well for another Link 2 target. One Apollosa, one Access Code, and one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. So let's hop into the replays and see how this deck performs. Before we hop into the duels, let me just say that... Uh, over 80% of the people who watch my content aren't subscribed. So if you find yourself coming back on the regular, you can always subscribe. And if you end up finding that you don't like the content anymore, you can always unsubscribe later. It's free, it's fun, 
and uh, it allows me to continue making content for you guys on the daily. So if you like the content, consider subscribing. Anyway, let's hop into the duels. All right, here we are in our first replay, and if I recall correctly, yeah, this one is rather interesting. So I'm going to fire off my maxi here that I drew for a turn, and they are going to full Adam Emancipator combo. I'm just going to let them go off, because you will see at the end, I have a lot of cards in hand. They're going to go for Halka Fibrax. They're like, I'm going to deck them out. And I'm, and then I see that we drew Droplet, which means uh, good game. Whatever they end up summoning, it doesn't matter. We have Droplet. So, yeah, it's it's game over from here. Um, they're going to keep their, you know, IP. IP Masquerina. They're going to get another uh, summon of their Blocky Boy. Blocky Boy comes out. We drew the second called by. And then for a turn, we actually drew Polly. Super Polly. So I'm going to send up a whole bunch of monsters and a whole bunch of the spells uh, and then just negate their entire field. Did I need to negate Union Carrier? No, but I did anyway. And then I Ixshell to draw two more cards because I'm a psychopath. Uh, <laughs> this is why you never take the Maxi Challenge. Don't do it. Okay? Just don't. There are a million outs to whatever the heck you are playing. Anyway, we're going to contact, bring out the Superbia. Superbia will bring out the Ixshell. Ixshell effect, bring, or activate the contact, contact out the indulged. I don't actually activate the indulged here because I don't want to lock myself into fairies. Just yet. We're going to go into Condemned. Condemned is going to activate. We are going to pitch the Superbia. We are going to add it to our hand a Morningstar. Now, I kind of messed up. I realistically should have normal summoned the Morningstar, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to go Fallen of All Boss here. We're going to pitch a card, and then we are going to use this IP Mask Arena to go into Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Cute. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon is going to increase its attack by Block Dragon's current attack. And then I'm going to copy the effect of Block Dragon. Kind of funny. Then I'm going to Super Poly off their two Wind Monsters, Apollosa and Raptite, into Mud Dragon. Kind of funny. Then I'm going to go for a Link 4 of Access Code Docker. Activate Access Code Docker. Banish a card. Destroy their Blocky Boy. Blocky Boy is going to activate. And guess what? I have a Cold by. Cute. So I'm going to banish their Block Dargan. Uh, bye bye And then I will activate our Despia, uh, or sorry, Despia op branded opening, which special summons out Tragedy, since we all we have both the Alubers in rotation already. Uh, but this was a mistake. I figured, hey, if I can summon out even Despia Tragedy in attack position, I should have lethal. However, it summons in defense, so it feels bad. And then I just activate my uh, Despia Tragedy to set our branded opening, proceed to the battle phase, and attack over everything. Yep, yep. Uh, we attack over everything, and then we activate our Allure of Darkness, and then they Nibiru. I don't know how this happened. I genuinely don't. Somehow, they didn't Nibiru us prior to us going to the battle phase, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, we still have follow-up, which is very funny. So we're going to activate this Allure of Darkness. They're going to Nibiru us, um, and there goes all of our monsters. And uh, we don't really get that big of a token. But, notably, we draw into the Despia Theater, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, we also get to special summon out Alubur from the grave because a fusion monster went to the graveyard. We're going to negate the effect of Nibiru, which is funny. Uh, and then we are going to fusion summon for three. Guess what? We're fusion summoning. That's right. The golden boy. We're going to pop his field because it's funny. Uh, and then Dramaturg of Despia comes out as well. So we're going to special summon out the boy. Or the uh, thing? I don't know. And then we're going to set this last called by the grave, and we still have four cards in hand, including an A max C. Granted, I don't really need to draw anything at this point, so yeah, I'm not even going to fire this. They're going to special summon out there. Uh, Analyzer. Analyzer is going to whiff, actually, which is very funny. Um, they're going to reveal a whole bunch of cards and whiff. Then they are going to activate their Adam Emancipator Researcher, special summon itself, and then reveal a whole bunch more cards. They reveal Gigantis, as well as uh, Doki Doki. They're going to go for Doki Doki, uh, go for the uh, level 4. They're going to go for Dragite. And because it's on summon, they can't even activate this card to uh, to negate, right? Um, oh, sorry. It only negates spells or traps. I think they might have been able to negate, but it uh, doesn't really matter. So we're going to negate their own monster, and then they proceed to the battle phase, and I'm just going to bring back this Ixshell. Um, they are going to crash our monsters, and I'm going to, going to bring back the Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Yeah, not a lot that they could have done. They should have walked over the token. It didn't really matter, though. We are going to go for the fusion of... Uh, of Quare. 
Aquarius. I'm going to normal summon the Alubur to grab another Despia Theater. We're then, then going to go for IP Mascarena, and then we will fire off this Contactor that we drew to go for Superbia to then bring back our Dramaturge. We're going to switch everything to attack and proceed to the battle. And at this point, it is well over lethal. Good game. All right, so here we are in our second game, and I believe we're going first here, yes. So this deck is very good at going first and second because it can play Super Poly as well as Forbidden Droplets very effectively, so that's very nice. Uh, they don't have an Ash Blossom, which is very nice, which means we get our search of Ixchel, and then we are going to activate our Alubur to search out our, uh, to search out the Branded Opening. A Branded Opening is going to special summon out Dramaturg, the reason we go for this is because uh, it's going to bring itself back and it can negate a monster that is summoned from the extra deck. Uh, and then we can go for the Despia Theater here, since we already drew it. So we're going to go for the Despia Theater. We're going to go for three to go for the big boy himself, First Dark Lord. So First Dark Lord is going to special summon himself, and then we are going to activate the Dramaturg, and then the uh, First Dark Lord. So, first Dark Lord is going to special summon out the Ixchel here, and then we are going to special summon out our Dramaturg. Then we are going to search a card, we're going to search the Superbia here, and then set Super Poly. The reason I search Superbia here is so that we have a discard fodder, as well as uh, having it in the grave is very nice for us, because with the first Dark Lord, we can bring this guy back, and then we can also bring back uh, one of our fairies, which is Alubert, so that's very nice. We see them drop the tanky here, which means, uh, yeah, we know what we're playing against. It's Tri Brigade Zodiac. So they're gonna fire off Fractal here. They're going to go for the Fractal into Kit, Kit into Nerval, Nerval add Karos. Pretty standard. Karos is gonna activate itself to special summon itself, and then they are going to normal summon Thoroughblade. So, note, this is an Earth. This is also an Earth. This is a beast. This is a beast warrior. Do you know what that means? That means Mud Dragon. So we're gonna. Uh, send off both of their monsters in order to go for Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Pretty pog. They're going to set two and pass. I'm going to activate my uh, first Dark Lord in order to go for Alubur here. Alubur is going to search Branded Opening, and we are going to pass the turn. All right, our turn. We draw Tragedy, which is pretty nice, but we are immediately going to go for the Link of Con Condemned Dark Lord. We're going to activate the effect of the first Dark Lord to bring out Superbia. Superbia's effect is going to activate in order to bring out the Alubur again. Alubur's effect is going to activate in order to search a card. We're going to search out the Despia Theater as extra discard material. We are going to then change the... Uh the effect, or sorry, change the attribute of Mud Dragon here, because Mud Dragon allows you to, um... Monsters of the same attribute cannot be targeted, so we change its attribute to Dark, which allows us to go for access code, because I was expecting it to be something like a, uh, an Imperm. Imperm is played a lot in this deck, so I was like, hey, if they have two set cards, it's probably an Imperm. Turns out, it's a Solemn Judgment. Feels bad, this access code just didn't do enough. So we're going to switch everything to attack position and proceed to battle. They're going to go for the Tri Brigade Revolt, and uh, here is where an interesting interaction happens. They're going to summon out everything. All right, they will link off for four. Now, the only time that we are able to activate Dramaturge of Despia is right now. However, for some reason, because of the way that this is sequenced, my card goes first, and then their card goes. I don't know why that is the case, but it is. So there's that. Uh, so they're going to be able to banish our uh, first Dark Lord before we get to, to negate their own effect, but it's not too big of a deal. And you will see why in a second. So we will go to the... Actually, it is a pretty big deal. Getting rid of the first Dark Lord. It, this was when I was only playing one first Dark Lord. Which means uh, we only have the one. Had I had a second, I could have gone for Branded Opening here. Gone into another Fairy type monster. Uh, and then potentially proceeded from there. But all in all, we go for this guy right here. We're going to activate Tragedy to search out the Alubur. And then we could have... Here is when we could have activated the Branded Opening uh, in order to... Well, I, it still wouldn't have done anything, but we could have had at least something else because we hadn't normaled and stuff like that. So, anyway, we still have uh, Quartus on the field, so there's that. They are going to special summon out their Keros by sending Kit. Kit is going to send Nerval to add Fractal. They're going to banish two for a Bear Brum, and then they are going to send their own... Fractal, which they had normal summoned to the grave, instead of activating its second effect to go for four. Um, so now they're kind of just in trouble. 
They're gonna go for Rugal here. Bear Brum's effect is going to activate to search out the Revolt and then return a card. Uh, yeah, at this point they go to the end phase and I'm just going to bring out our Tragedy. Tragedy is then going to banish itself because I'm stupid and just click buttons. Realistically, I shouldn't have done that because we could have gone for Despia, uh, or the Theater, and go into a another fusion using the Tragedy, which then could have added another card to our hand. But, alas, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, they go for Rugal here, and I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. It doesn't really matter what they end up summoning here, but sure. Uh, we're going to activate our Quare. Qu Qu Quare, eh? Quare Archeris. Uh, because it changes everything to zero, and then we are just going to fusion summon out our uh, our Pross, and then just bonk them over the head for lethal. There you go, good game. All right, here we are in our third duel. This time, once again, going second. However, we did draw Forbidden Droplets, which is pretty nice. And it's against Eldledge. Oh, okay. I guess Forbidden Droplets just doesn't do anything here. Uh, they're going to search out Conquistador. They are going to hand destruction us. Which is interesting. Luckily, we had Despia Tragedy, so we get to search another card. Happy day. Uh, they are going to banish their Eldlixir to set a Conquistador. Now they have a Conquistador. Uh, no, they don't. They had set their Conquistador. So we know that they have two Conquistadors, which is kind of funny. Then they are going to activate Opening of the Spirit. So they're also playing, for some reason, the Sacred Beasts. I don't know what's happening, but sure. Uh, they're going to search out their uh, Tribute Summon Monster. They're going to Tribute Summon, uh, in or get another Normal. They're going to Tribute off this guy to go for Ham on here. Then they are going to activate their Eldritch to send their uh, Eldlixir. Or sorry, Cursed Eldland, in order to do special summon out the Eldlich here. Uh, we did draw Called by, as well as Nibiru, but we did draw Called by, which is very nice. Uh, the rest of our hand isn't the greatest. Oh, sorry. I should note, off of Tragedy, we ended up searching Dramaturg because we drew Theater. So, sending Dramaturg is very, very good for us uh, because it comes back. So, that's why we did that. Uh, okay, so we know that we are playing through a, a, uh, a Conquistador, at the very, I think two, at the very least two Conquistadors, um, and then we kind of don't know anything else. But we draw, we draw Allure of Darkness for a turn, so we are going to banish this Tragedy and draw two. Uh, Tragedy searches out the Alubur, Alubur is going to activate, and there's the Skill Drain! Ah, feels good. Feels real good. So, Alibur is not going to get the search. Feels, you know, bad. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to go for the branded opening here. Then they are going to negate it. And I go, wait, that's actually, like, really good for me. Because <laughs> now they don't have an Eldlich on their side of the field. Fantastic. I'm going to go for the fusion summon. Uh, so, we're going to activate the fusion uh, in order to go for uh, Quaritus. Or Quar. Uh, it's the best one that we can realistically go for. Uh, we will special summon out the Dramaturge and then just pass our turn with the set called by and the set branded opening. We have Maxi as well as Nibiru, which isn't like too important. Uh, they're going to activate their Eldlich and I am going to banish their Eldlich and say, no, no, none of that. They actually ended up setting their cursed, or er, did they activate it? They might have activated it, who cares? Uh, they will activate their opening of the spirit guide in order to add a continuous spell from their grave to their hand which I thought was the special summon effect. Uh, but it's fine, because they'll just special summon anyway. So they're going to activate the effect to discard a card to special summon, and then uh, actually a special summon. There we go. Uh, so I ended up drawing two cards here, which is Superbia and Super Poly, both of which are crazy. Uh, and you will see why in a second. I'm going to activate during the end phase in order to special summon out our tragedy by pitching this Nibiru. That's not doing anything in our hand. I drew a Fallen of Albaz, which is very funny, but we're going to immediately fire off this Super Polymerization, get rid of their two Sacred Beasts, and then immediately go into Proroskion. And then I'm going to activate Tragedy, which is going to search out our Alubur. We're going to Normal Summon the Alubur, switch everything to Attack Position, and proceed to the Battle Phase. They're going to take the 18 and then scoop it up, because they realize, yeah, we're even able to play through uh, a skill drain. So yeah, your two set conquistadors aren't going to be enough. All right, and here we are in our next duel with this hand uh, going first, which is, it's an okay hand. It's not the greatest, but it's okay. 
Um, I'm going to try and bait out an Ash Blossom here with the Banishment. I don't really care if Banishment resolves. It does! Fantastic, we get our eggshell. We're going to go for the Aloe Bear here, and they are going to activate their Max C. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's fine with me. I'm not going to be special summoning all that much. So we're going to go Aloe Bear, search out our Fusion spell. Or, sorry, the Field spell. We're going to go for the Field spell. We're going to then uh, go into Quar... Qu quar. Uh, and then we're going to set one and pass. The reason I go for this guy is because Gamma. Just getting rid of Gamma is very nice. They're going to go for the Lightning Storm, which really sucks for us. Uh, and then they go for Galaxy Soldier. Okay. Galaxies. Pog. They're going to add their Galaxy Knight here. They are going to then special summon out Photon Vanisher. And I am going to actually activate here the Quar. Reason for this is because it prevents them from special summoning out their... Um, Pho Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, because he requires two monsters with 2,000 or more attack. Well, if their attack is zero, you can't special him out. So, I'm gonna do that instead. So just prevent everything, uh, from, or anything from happening, uh, off of these two monsters. They are going to normal summon a Galaxy Wizard, tribute itself to add Galaxy Expedition. Expedition is going to come down, and they are going to special summon from the deck at A level 8, and then proceed to the end phase in a really roundabout way. They go to battle, and then the main phase too, and then the end phase. Very funny. Uh, we draw another fusion spell. Fantastic. I'm just going to switch my guy to attack position, and then attack it into this level 8. The reason I decided to do this is because of the fact that... Uh, well, yes, I could switch, you know, have put these guys to uh, zero attack and defense. I didn't really need to. I felt like ha getting an eight off of the field is way more important, given the fact that I can just, you know, easily get rid of these guys uh, or basically make them useless. So they are going to normal summon out their Galaxy Knight and they are going to target one of their level eights. They're going to go for the Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon here. And then they are going to go for Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. Now this guy says negate. So, instead of activating my Quare here, or my Quar, I'm going to just elect to not. Uh, and because of the fact that uh, our guy comes back out, Aluber, he comes out, he's going to negate the effect of our, our beautiful Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. And since it happened during the damage step, he cannot respond, which is dumb, but uh, he can't. So, that means our guy gets a free negate, and then he comes back, he gets destroyed, and then our Quare comes back as well. I'm going to switch everything to zero. He's going to waste a negate, which doesn't do anything, which is... Hey, that's another material that uh, we don't have to deal with. Everything goes to zero during the end phase, uh, and then we just pass the turn. Still kind of not... Yep, yeah, called by the grave doesn't really help. However, notably, guess what? Alibur went back to the grave. It doesn't get banished when it activates its graveyard effect. Meaning, let's do it again, shall we? Let's do this dance again. Quare activates. They are going to activate both of the effects of Photon Lord to grab another material as well as negate my effect. Feels bad. Grab up that material. They grab up a, um, a Photon Thrasher. They're going to destroy my monster. We are going to special summon out the Alibur. We are going to activate the effect of Quar in order to special summon it from the deck as well. Crazy, crazy. And then we are going to special summon out the Dramaturg. We're going to negate the effect of the Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. Then we will go for the Fusion Summon of the First Dark Lord. Here he come. Here he is. Dramaturge is going to activate in order to special summon itself back onto the field. We're going to activate the First Dark Lord to bring out Alubur. Why? Because I'm dumb. Then we are going to go for Link 2 of Condemned. Condemned is going to activate. We're going to pitch this Nibiru, which my opponent has been playing around ever so beautifully. We're going to search out Morningstar. We are then going to use the effect of Condemned to tribute summon the Morningstar. And then we will go one, two, and three monsters onto the field. Activate Morningstar, mill six. We are going to then activate Ixrel, search out a contact because we have not used it this turn. Remember, we used first Dark Lord to get our first Superbia. We're then going to go for an Appaloosa with three materials because if they are playing Nibiru, we'd be screwed. Activate our contact. Contact back through Superbia. Superbia effect is going to activate to bring out our Dramaturg. The reason I go for Dramaturg is because negate. It's funny. Then I will go for Hope Harbinger, Dragon, or, uh, the Titan Dragon. And then I am going to attack into my opponent and then realize, oh right, this card says uh, your opponent can't, or your card cannot be destroyed by battle. Whoops. That's fine. We will just attack into everything here and then proceed to main phase two where I make the executive decision that it would be the funniest if I just linked off into Underworld Goddess, use all of my materials, go into Underworld Goddess. Was this the best play? No. 
But it was funny. So there you go. So we'll summon out this guy, and during the main phase, we can activate our first Dark Lord, which is why I wasn't too upset about this, because we can bring back the Superbia, Superbia can bring back the Dramaturg, which means if they go into an extra deck monster, we can just straight up negate it. On top of that, they're going to activate their Galaxy Wizard, which is going to tribute itself, and then we are just going to call by the Grave them, because we, that's what we drew for Dern. And then, uh, they surrender. Uh, uh, hold on. There's the surrender. Good game. Alright, so I'm sure you're wondering, okay, we saw some replays, but how good is the deck? Well, the fact that we took down three top tier strategies in Eldlich, Ad Emancipator, and Tri Brigade, while well, that Tri Brigade pilot was not the smartest, neither was the Ad Emancipator player, we still took them down pretty effectively. Um, on top of that, that Galaxy game was never out of our control. Uh, and the fact that we are able to float so consistently, not a lot of decks have a way to deal with that. While we aren't playing any main deck inclusion for back row removal, most of the time, you could just play through it. Uh, we don't really have a... There aren't really good ways to deal with a lot of our monsters. Uh, even things like Torrential Tribute or... Or Skill Drain or what have you kind of don't solve the issue for a lot of decks. Something like IO would definitely destroy this deck, but in all honesty, other than specifically that card, which is a one of, you're pretty good. Uh, all in all, I think this is a great strategy, very easily a plat 1 strategy, on top of the fact that it's just very fun. This is the most fun I've had with Dark Lords in Master Duel since the game came out, which was like two months ago. So, I love it. I think it's very fun. I'm very excited for the new Despio cards that will inevitably, hopefully, pray, pray to Konami, come. Uh, but eventually, yeah, I, I, I'm excited. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy this deck and I'm going to be playing a lot of it and probably climbing with it because, uh, yeah, all in all, it was, it, 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 it worked. It worked. Uh, it really did. So that's going to be it for this episode. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, a like is very much appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye.